has everything. Bumping in, banging. <laughs> Big boy Big neighborhood. All righty, man. For those who know, they know. If mm -hmm. they don't know, this is an introduction. Yes, now, Jesse Reyes is in hey. the neighborhood. Jesse Reyes, so welcome excited. to the neighborhood, my love. Thank you. Let me tell you now, <laughs> Ida's been on you. Yes. All right. Hey. And, and it's crazy yes. because Ida was one that was like, oh, we need to book her. We need to book her. <laughs> when I saw you at the BET Awards, that was like a real introduction for me. When I saw you on the Nissan stage yeah. and... Just you and your guitar, Man. and you went for broke. Killed it. And I'm, I'm talking about, dude, it's crazy. Chills. I got chills right now <laughs> oh, thinking about the performance that you did that day. First off, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You knew it was amazing, too, huh? Because you dropped your guitar when it was broke. <laughs> yeah. like, <laughs> no, but could, could you feel... That energy inside of um, that spot? Yeah, man. I got off and started crying. I got off and hugged my folks and, and went, like, ran out to where the stairs were and it just all came out and started shaking and I was oh, just wow. so happy. I was scared. You don't understand. I was so nervous. I was scared I was going to cuss. I was scared oh, I was going to, like, <laughs> like choke. Like, scared I was going to, like, get too emotional because sometimes that happens, like, you know, right. if I get two in the song, you couldn't tell though. You look just like pro, like up there. Like amazing. it was, it's one of those performances. Like if you didn't see it, just know it was so good that I went back and rewound yeah, it man. to watch it again. Hey, I, watched it at home. Dude, I, I remember asking my wife, like, "Baby, did you like, like, like not knowing that you were going to come to the neighborhood or mm -hmm. anything like that?" Yeah. And it's crazy because there were so many stars there that yes. night. But you walked away with a couple of performances. And I remember, mm -hmm. Jesse, when you got off stage, all you could see was people looking at each other and going, like, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. all you could see was that. And me, everybody in our row, too, was like, man, like, I was, dude, I was blown How exciting. away. Thank now, you. Now, are, are you ready for all this now? Yeah. Like all this? Yeah, I mean, just everything. <laughs> yes. You know, because for one, you, you got to have one of those where, you're putting the work in. Oh, yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And you putting the work in and if if it's either playing right in the <clears> you know, <throat> trying to get there and then it's not like you arrive, but there's a time when when people start to take notice. Like I take notice, whoever it is that start to take notice. But it ha it couldn't have been an overnight success. Hell no. Yeah. Or, or <laughs> as we say, uh, it's been a long ass night then, you know? Yeah, yeah. man, for real. Like, right now, I'm actually on tour, and mm -hmm. it just so happened that, like, the dates worked out. Like, tonight's tonight's going to be my first sold-out show in L.A., Go ahead, and man. we just came off of off of um, a sold-out show in Chicago, and then after, like, where were we before L.A.? Houston, that was a crazy everywhere. show. Not everywhere. Not everywhere. I'm not like You'll that get, yet. You're going to get there. You're going to get there. <laughs> Hopefully, man. But it's it's been great. It's How been long great. has it been as far as, like, when you first say, you know what, I want to write, was, or... How old how old were you then? I was three. Three years of age. I was three when I started singing and like singing horribly. Right. But I was th three when I started singing and then I started writing poetry when I was like mm, like ten years old. 10, Does, 11 years what about old. the playing? The playing. I started piano when I was three too. Okay. But I dropped piano and then fell in love with dance and then picked up the guitar again at church like in when I was like thirteen or fourteen and my dad plays too and so it was in the family, you know? Yeah, so. did you either of your parents sing? Oh, uh, my dad. My dad sings. Nice. So that's where it comes from. Yeah, yeah. He that's sings cool. more when he's so drunk. So he, he got to see what's going on now. Pop's still here with us? Yeah, hell yeah. Pop's was at the BTO or Oh, hell no. Hey, no. Turn it up. Yeah, man. I want to tell you straight up now. Now, there's some things that I do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then I know there's going to be some things that my kids are going to do. Like my kids, you know, you look at your kids, you say, oh, but I know that there's things that they're going to do that's going to surpass me. Yeah. And if I'm at an award show, now, I'm a failed rapper. If my son becomes something, I'm at an award show, I'm not going to be too happy. I would be happy, <laughs> but on the inside, Absolutely I'm going to almost have like, a, like kind of an F him kind of mm, thing. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, man, there's a little feedback on your mic, JD. You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't hit that uh, note right like, Yeah, yeah. That. Like, yeah, I told you, man. Like, why you give your mom a shout out before your dad, man? Like, like, but your dad got to be extremely happy. Yeah, man. He didn't give me no feedback comments or nothing. Not like that, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah, yeah, your dad probably, you know, yes. he, 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 he probably loving what you do. You know, my kids get past me. It's going to be a little hater in him. You know what I'm saying? Just, just a little bit. But he, what does he say as a father when man. you get off stage? He's just happy, man. He's, 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 he tries to calm me down because my nerves hit harder when I get off. 
Really? Like when I get off the stage, that's when it's over. And I like, I lie down. I have to like sit and just, that's when it kind of overwhelms me. But Is that live performances like that or even when you're doing your shows and they're sold out and everything? Even my shows. When I get off stage, I'm like, sh- like it's just it's just like a crazy fucking high. Like yeah. I just get so happy, you know? And especially like if it's a, if it's like, because you know, you pinpoint mistakes and I could save mistakes on stage because they still mm-hmm. happen. But like I stay up late. I run through shit. I like make sure that I'm practicing. I make sure that that doesn't happen. And when it when it goes like seamless and there's mm-hmm. not a mistake that I can even catch, wow! I just get off like so. Did you happy. catch anything on the BET uh, on the award show? Uh, yo, honestly, I felt so blessed because anything that could have gone wrong, like we we only had a certain amount of time, so I had to cut out lines from the song. Wow! And I've never performed the song minus these two lines mm-hmm. that were in the first verse. Mm-hmm. So I was walking on that those stairs like running it, running it, and then I like my thought process was like running it with without the lyrics that I took out, and then no cussing, no cussing, right, right. running it without <laughs> the lyrics, don't cuss, don't cuss, don't cuss, and like that over and over. But and it over was again. live. I would have just snuck those two lines back right. in. What are they gonna do? What they gonna do? You know well, what no, saying? well because the, the, it was strategic because the hook I feel like is what makes people like that's. I know you're gonna walk home and like. If if you took it in and you sat there and you opened mm-hmm. your heart to me, I'm gonna leave that little that little bit inside you, and that's the easiest, it's the smallest, most potent part that I could leave inside somebody. Mm-hmm. And if since I only had this amount of time, I had to make sure that we got to the hook and that and in, in the a lot of time. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we cut them out. But but by the grace of God, they ended up giving me two minutes, even though yeah, they gave man. me a minute. So we got to deliver the hook twice. Because you <laughs> know what? And usually, Jesse, when when you watch those like the the like the bumper performance, it's almost like you're almost performing for the audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I know, and I and it's crazy because not knowing that I was going to sit down with you, I noticed I kept looking like, okay, they're still on air. I don't know why, but I kept looking like, oh, okay, it's still being televised. Because yeah. usually it's like, you know, huh, and then they, mm-hmm. BT Awards coming back, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. they held on for you. Yeah. And you blew a lot of people off that stage <laughs> too, Jack. I'm not going to name any names that wasn't better, but... <laughs> Hey man, let so me tell you, I just told her that day, I said, dude, I said, I think she's gonna be my new favorite. <laughs> yeah, oh you my did. And, and I picked it up on uh on iTunes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's Thank a whole you. lot of goodness for four ninety nine. I ain't mad so at it. <laughs> you know, I buy garbage for sixteen bucks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, good lord. But so so now you're on the road a lot? Yeah. But you've probably been on the road a lot anyway, correct? No, this no. is my first tour. So we just hopped on the road June first and like Governor's Ball in New York was my first festival. How did they find you? Um, governors, well, just period. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. like, what was the so called Jesse Reyes? What, what was the struggle? Like, do you start off, you know, like, is it smaller clubs? Open is it mics. Like, oh, yeah, like, I, like, I don't know your story. All of that, man. It was open <laughs> mics. It was busking on the side of the street. It was me pushing mixtapes when I didn't have enough money to buy to buy CDs. So I would put a CD in the middle of a piece of paper, fold that shit up, tape it, flip it. Jesse Reyes, my phone that. number, and like. I would take that shit everywhere. I'd make sure I had mixtapes on me all the time. And if I ever went to parties, like I was just telling one of the guys, we went to this like rave. <clears throat> I got I got this song coming up with 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 uh, Calvin Harris. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're waiting. Hard to love. So, so hard to Can't love. Yeah, man. To hear it. So I met, yeah. and he didn't even notice till the end of our session because I felt comfortable enough to tell him at the end of our session. But when I was eighteen in Toronto, there was this party in in this place called Government. And it's like this rave and it's just nuts. And I didn't have enough money to buy a ticket. And I was hustling my music and my friends were like, let's go. And I was like, nah. How much nah. was the ticket? It wasn't that expensive, but I just didn't have the money. Yeah, it was like see, it was like 40 I'm bucks. That's what I love. Yeah. yeah, man. So my friends were like, we got you. We'll buy your ticket. I was like, thanks, man. But I got it. Like, it, 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 when I wasn't working, I wanted to be doing music. And so they were like, just come, like, bring in mixtapes. Like, how you always do. I was like, okay, cool. So I did it and I put, like, tw- like, like 10 mixtapes in my, like, little jean purse. And my boy would, like, like put me on his shoulders and we weave through the crowd yes. and there was like you know the DJ when he's on like a podium yeah. Yeah. so he would hold me on and I was like trying to hand it off and it was like um, uh, Cascade in that room wow. and Cascade like took the CD and, and was kind of laughing and then I was like alright cool next room so we went to the next room and it was Calvin Harris but Calvin Harris he didn't have the, the podium was on a stage so as opposed to me walking up on someone's shoulders I couldn't because there's an extra two feet mm-hmm. wow. so then I was like, all right, cool. I got to scope this different. And I looked around and there was like this little spot on the stage where security wasn't covering. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So I gave my purse to my homies and I got one CD and then I like went up and like scoped it out. And then security looked the other way. So I was like, zoom. And I went up and I was like, and he was DJing. You know, when you're a kid, you're because I used to spam people with my music. I used to do it. You you don't care because you you don't know that that's not what you're supposed to do. But 
I used so to do hungry. that. So hungry that yeah. you don't care. So I was like, my CD, my CD. And he's DJing and, and, he, and he looks over like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to shake it in front of his turntables. And then someone, like his assistant or something, looked and bagged what I was trying to do and then like ran up and was like shaking their head and like took Aww. the CD and giggled. And I was like, thank you, thank you. And as I'm doing this, I look over and security's peep game. Oh, so I'm like, man. shit. And so then I like, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't get off from where I got off. So I just looked into the crowd and I was like, fuck it. And I ran and I jumped Did into the crowd. Yeah. 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 That's so awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so, somebody gonna hear that story and be like man I was there that night yeah. Yeah. I was there <laughs> at what point does Calvin Harris then reach back out to you on probably Twitter. in the studio that night like, yeah. you had to tell him the story like oh that was you well yeah I told him the story that night but on Twitter on Twitter a year ago he reached out and said like yo figures is dope people are people are really fucking with it wow. I thought you should know that and just offered me words of encouragement and then yeah. we ended up working together and then at the end of the session I was like bro we met <laughs> what, did so he, what, awesome. what was his reaction? He was like, story. "No way! Like that's crazy." But the guy's done like state. a million shows. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and, and he can't really look and say, "Hey, I remember that." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and now that you're in the business, you probably don't really. Figured out like to some cats that's like a pet peeve. Like you know what I'm saying? Like oh man, I can't believe another. Like yeah, somebody else is handing because everybody want to be in in the business too. Yeah. Has it started to happen to you yet? That that, that people come up and, and want to hand the CD you music. In front of you? Man, I can't. I don't. I I feel like I'm still trying to climb up, you know. Mm-hmm. So then, when people do that to me, I feel like I feel like I'm looking in the mirror because I'm still trying to hustle. Like I'm still trying to like, you know what I mean? I want yeah. Grammys. I I want big things. Yeah. So to me, I'm not. I'm nowhere to feel any sort of pet peeveness because I'm like shit. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm still right. trying to hand off my shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, here's mine. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Like, here, hit me up. Like it's like an exchange. Like here. All right. Would you got a show? All right. I got a show. <laughs> Yeah, you go man. Tuesday, I go Wednesday. You just celebrated a birthday as well? Oh, I you did, got, yes. Go ahead now. I did. What did you do for your birthday? Uh, Performed? <laughs> yeah, well, shit, shit. What did I do for my birthday? Exactly. I was in a van. Oh, man. I was in a you van. You were traveling? <laughs> yeah, I was traveling from between shows, and the boys all sang me happy birthday in the car. Aww. And my mom spent, like, my mom and dad spent 40 minutes on the phone with me and then had me in tears because they cried. Aww. They sing me happy birthday every year. In Spanish like that. That's yeah, so man. cute. Like in the EP. I was telling Jesse that it was so interesting because on Kiddo, she has a track called Colombian King and Queen mm-hmm. where it's her mom and her dad singing happy birthday and wishing her a happy birthday. And I'm Mexican. She's Colombian. And a long time ago when I was singing happy birthday in Spanish, this other Latina was like, that's not how you sing it. And I'm like, yes, it is. This is how I've always saying happy birthday. But in Colombian King and Queen, her parents are singing it the way that the other girl was saying that it's oh. sung. So I was like, yo, it was just so beautiful to hear because it's so, it's something like so important, like hearing that every single year, like happy birthday. Like it just, the words, like your parents, like it's so beautiful hearing that as part of kiddo. Like I thought that was really dope that you included that. Thank you. Also because she is a Latina and it's mm-hmm. included in there yeah. and like that they are speaking in Spanish. Like that was really, really And the dope. way that you, you look at it is beautiful. I'm looking at it. That's her dad trying to get back in. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he, yeah, he's probably right. like, man, did we, we anybody, did anybody call for me, yeah. baby? Or you know what I'm saying? Like, Queen Part Two. We, yeah, you know, like we, you know, I, I think that I think we should duet together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's probably looking EP like going. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, like, he was like, yeah, this the EP, but the full list. I gotta be on there, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta be on the whole album. You know what I'm saying? So, so you a right, kid? Or do you have the album in your head? Like I'm pretty sure that you always kind of creating that at moments hell you came in with a guitar on your back yeah man always creating i mean i got we, we got a lot of songs we got a lot of songs ready and i still i still create but it's I'm, I'm a fan of going into the studio and writing like five songs and then choosing one that i want to polish for the session because i like just getting it out and then when something's potent enough it'll hit you strong enough mm-hmm. and then you know that that's the one as opposed to like as opposed to just betting on one but you don't know if you're gonna love that in a few hours you know right damn where do your parents stay at now uh they're they're in toronto they're in florida sometimes but they're with me a lot like i like bringing them on the road with me when i can are they here with you today? hell yeah they're in los angeles (laughs) where they at the hotel on the boulevard boy they're like you know what (laughs) oh man you're gonna come home they're gonna have them hollywood shirts on this (laughs) shit you know what I'm saying? Like, man, this is beautiful. Look, I got this Oscar. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> or you, you know, when you start planning your tour oh, around the stuff you want to do, like, baby, yeah, yeah, Hawaii. <laughs> uh, we, we this is, our, this is on the list. Yeah, yeah. we gotta do. We, uh, we gotta do Hawaii. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, oh, baby, yeah. Okay, when we go to New York again, we gotta make sure that uh, we get a day off because we gotta we gotta travel too. Yeah. But that is beautiful that you have your parents or that that they can come out and bear witness to 
to this as well. Man. You know what I'm saying? Because cats can love you from afar and fans and everything. But when you share that with your family, yeah. mm-hmm. that is amazing, man. Yeah, so man. congratulations to you. And it's, it's really a pleasure to meet you. Yes. Thank you. It's yeah. a pleasure to meet you. I saw that uh, Chance hit you up on Twitter and also, congr- like, what was the emotion when you saw that tweet from him congratulating you? It's dope, man. He's also been another one that's, like, provided guidance and, and provided, like, love and support and like the entire team like their team fucks with our team so like it's just it's just dope man i felt so happy especially because it was all in caps i was like yeah. these motherfuckers yelling love at me right now you, know? you curse a whole <laughs> fucking lot. i love it that's how comfortable she is I know, like dog. man I'm, I'm glad she didn't win an award that night yeah. too, so oh. man, first off fuck <laughs> Everybody else doing it. You got to thank God, right? You know, best believe that. All my motherfucking yeah. producers. Dad, get your motherfucking ass up here. Oh, he already, oh, oh, he already behind me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. But, but, but yeah, that's why when you were saying, man, I hope I don't slip. I hope uh. I don't slip. And what's crazy is, you know, I'm trying to cut down quite a bit myself. You know what I'm saying? But you find yourself really thinking like, okay, it, there's times also when we're on air and I say, damn, did I curse? <laughs> you just don't know. Just Yeah, like, did I curse? <laughs> but then there's also some that do. You know. mm-hmm. I haven't yet. You haven't yet? No. Oh, really? Wow. No, I'm not. Well, so, I mean, which is like so surprising because I well, cut a lot. Well, if you talk more on air, we, you would. You know, <laughs> I do talk yeah. a lot. Get your segments on it. <laughs> we could be nice. Stop hating. Jesse, when picking like tracks to go on Kiddo, was it hard for you to put gatekeeper on considering that your parents are listening now and like to hear that you've been through that experience what's the experience please Hmm. okay it's it's a satirical take from from the gatekeeper's perspective if i if that ass is like it's about sucking dick to get a deal and like Mm -hmm. people saying that you know having that idea of like telling telling little girls or even boys sometimes like this is what you got to do you better get on your knees or you better like you know give me something for this dream and they hold it in front of you and they tempt you with it you know Mm -hmm. and because it's a kid dream even if you're grown even if you're 18 19 years old that hits you a little deeper and you get a little stupider because you 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 just you you I don't know, man. It's like the kid comes out of you again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I went through that one night when I was, when I was, I just moved to Florida and, and I was in that situation and it was a, an eventful night. Like we did a short film about it because I didn't mm-hmm. want the song just to be the song. Right. I wanted to make sure people had like answers. Mm-hmm. Like don't take this for what it is. Like this is exactly what happened. And this is exactly how I moved. But I didn't want to come off um, like pious or high, 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 like high and mighty because I said no because there was a point in the night where I thought, fuck, like, yeah. maybe I should do this. Like, this is what I've been mm. chasing my entire life. If this is what I got to do, do I have to do it if I love this dream enough? If I don't, am I made out for this industry? Am I, right. am, I, is it, am, am, I am I where I'm supposed to be? Like, mm-hmm. did I choose the wrong passion? You know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. And so, Gatekeeper was that, was, was me being presented with that and then struggling with that decision, but then by the grace of God deciding not to. And so, when... Uh, we as a team talked about like what songs to go on and what songs to leave off. I had to sit my parents down and I was like, listen, this happened. This happened like five years ago. So I don't want y'all to trip. I'm different now. I was younger then. I was quieter. I was like, mm, you know, you, you grow up and you grow thicker skin and you, you, right. you set your boundaries and you teach people how to treat you. But that only comes with years of like experience mm-hmm. and years of having people walk on you to the point where you're like, man, fuck you. Like, mm-hmm. no. So then I sat them down and I was like, I don't want y'all to get scared. This doesn't happen anymore. Like I, I, and I said no, and I don't, I don't, like I haven't had to deal with the dude. I'm not going to make it this big thing about the guy because I feel like if I put his name out there, mm-hmm. it changes the message and it makes it more about him as opposed to the, the message. And when people have all gone through it, if you put a face on an enemy, it, it kind of, it hinders unifying everyone who's been affected mm-hmm. because now they it's not their enemy as opposed to if I'm like, no, 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 it's the cause. We're against mm-hmm. the cause. But anyways, I sat them down and I talked to them about it. And my mom got emotional mm-hmm. and my dad was like, well, shit, like, I'm happy that you did it. Like, you right. know, and and they were a little worried. Them what? and my big brother sat down and were yeah. like, are you sure? <laughs> no- you know, wh- oh, d- 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 what did say- your big brother say? N- that are you sure nothing's going to come back and like, fuck, fuck you up more? Like, mm-hmm. can't they can't they turn around and like do something to you? And I was like, man, it's in their best interest not to, because I haven't said no fucking names, and it's and I, and it's not even because I'm protecting nobody, mm-hmm. but but one of the repercussions of you trying to do something to me is gonna right. be that I'll right. blow it up. Yeah. I give a fuck. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now and, and not <laughs> that you will, but if you that. did say it, they're a known person. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. All righty. And the one thing about the song Gatekeeper and the way that you explained it to us is, of course, when somebody dangling your dream, you mm-hmm. think and you, you you say that you think like, like, damn, should I, should I not? Your mind goes there. But also being that you didn't, even young and naivete and everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's that you didn't. But also for the next person that could listen to Gatekeeper, that could be even more of just a boost for them not to or right, an expectation exactly. or knowing that these things they really do mm-hmm. happen mm-hmm. like if you had a song like that you're like oh damn that's what such and such mm-hmm. was talking about now i'm here mm-hmm. so for the next person they'll have this god willing that everybody gets something in their hands where they have kiddo but for the next person they'll have this where they'll say you know what this is this is what was expected or this is mm-hmm. what jesse was talking about and they can use that to step away or that's another piece of being of helping them say no. Yeah. Exactly. And knowing yeah. that that's, that doesn't have to be the reality of it just to have your dreams come true. That's really powerful. That's why I'm really glad that you included that and in especially with the short film because like, I think that hearing it is one thing but like seeing it is another especially how you started off like every little girl has a dream and yours was singing and like I think that a lot of people are going to take back from that, especially mm-hmm. like Big was saying, because you're, you're so young, like, and you want things so bad. You're mm-hmm. like, whatever, this is the only mm-hmm. way. This is the only way it's going to happen. And if this is the only person that can give it to me, and this is the only way that I can do it, they do it. Yeah. You know, so and I think you know that what, you're going to. What's what's empowering about this, whoever the piece of shit is, we don't, we don't need to know, but he probably, and you're cool with that. He probably thinking like, man, like she's making it or she's made it, you know, and I, he probably could be like, either probably nervous too like will she say something but mm. like nah you know what you be the scandalous piece of shit piece that of you shit. are yeah, man. and I'll continue mm-hmm. to to go down this path that I'm going down I will. So, big boy big neighborhood boy. Jesse Reyes we're gonna let you go ahead and continue to bless Aww. the world yeah. Yeah. man let me tell you <laughs> you are <laughs> so extremely it. talented thank you thank so you for much. coming into the neighborhood thank you for the great positive energy yes I, they, I thank you for the 7,000 yes. text messages <laughs> you're welcome of bring her <laughs> in <laughs> she, even, even this morning because we wasn't 100% <laughs> She hit me like at what six this morning? Yeah, is, early. Uh, did we oh get Jesse? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Even last kid. night you was on yeah. in group text, man. Girl, but, thank you. That's so welcome. dope. Thank yeah, you. Man. Thank you guys to hear your voice. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for being a great spirit. Thank you for performing for us. Mm-hmm. And we wish you nothing but the best. Yes. Nothing you. but We're the so best. Excited. Man. Thank you so much. And it was really Jesse, a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. That means so much. Those positive words and Man. like this is a very energy, positive energy exchange right now because that's all I feel too. So thank and you. And I Aww. cannot wait to see you continue. Oh mm-hmm. man, you know what I'm saying? Like I've I've seen this, and I can't wait to see you continue on on this journey and how many people mm. and how many lives you're about mm-hmm. to really touch. Like I went and I purchased the um, kiddo. Thank you. And I had to, and I was telling Ida, I said, dude, she's about to be one of my favorites. And this is before, <laughs> not even, I'm talking about not even with you sitting down and even rooting for you more. It was just with the music, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I haven't had a chance to really get married to it, but as soon as I get in the car, Dope. it's on and popping. But I thank so you, my beautiful. love, and God bless you. Thank you. God bless thank you too, man. God bless y'all. Thank oh, you, guys. Jesse Ray is in the neighborhood, big boy big neighborhood. Boy.